guys, so I've decided to do a Country Roads Take Me Home video here. I'm coming up on a little town, I'm up in Myers Town as a doctor's appointment for my cough. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna do some filming out in the area since I'm down in this area, might as well. And I'm out near a little town called Stoutsburg. Uh, I had done a video on Topahawk and uh, Reform Church uh, and the Red Rose gift that they, they give to uh, the Casper Whisper, Wister family. And I also did one on Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church here coming up on Stoutsburg. And there's a really unique area, like almost like a plantation. It's all stone buildings. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, but I just figure I'm going to drive you through this town and then we're going to go exploring. Uh, cool log cabin there. Just a lot of really neat old stone buildings, uh, old brick buildings. A uh, cool church here. Whether this church is actually in use anymore, I'm not really sure. But uh, they are fixing it up. But it almost looks like it's been taken over by like a business now. I'm not sure or not because they still do have the thing that has church services in there. But uh, I had been through this town before, but really really neat town maybe about five miles east of Myerstown right off of route 422 it's just one of those where they have the main street it's just pretty tight cool buildings a lot of the old architecture if you will and uh, there's like old fire company that was probably an inn at some point but uh, I just I just find these old towns just so intriguing and uh, maybe we'll try to make our way over see there look at the old gingerbread in the woodwork uh, just neat neat stone building we're gonna make a left up here before we leave the uh, town because there's a pretty cool building up on the hill and I figure we'll try to go that way and make our way out towards like the Schaeferstown, Richland, Newmanstown area. But just, oh my God, it's just so scenic. Cool barn, really neat, neat home here. And this would have been, if you would have had a place, that probably would have been like the manor house. But we're gonna go this way. Uh, cool little pond right over there. Now that's a newer home, but there's this place up on the hill here. Sort of caught my eye. Like up there, I don't know how old that is, but it almost looks like it could have been like a school or something at some point. But yeah, that's just neat. Another neat old stone house here. So we're just going to go and we're going to see what we can see. And they got like the moss growing on the roofing shingles and everything old barn there pretty neat I've never been back here so this will be a new adventure for uh, both of us and this here is the Topa Hawken Creek um, also like I said I honestly have no idea what is this oh this is a rod and gun club Marion Township that's pretty neat that's a, that's an old that's probably like Civil War era place like I said I never I, at least I don't remember being back back here before but this is out through the country uh, farm field so this will probably wind out taking us since it's called Richland Road uh, probably will wind out taking us back to uh, Richland which is where we want to go because we want to try to uh, check out uh, I'd like to check out the uh, Fort Zellers which I've been promising you for a while that we were going to go to and since we just did the video on Fort Manita I sort of thought it'd be cool to uh, maybe come out through here and uh, visit Fort Zellers because that's a fort uh, they actually fixed it up to be like it was back during the French and Indian War. Uh, I'm really not sure how much you're allowed to go around, um, but I think it's open that you can just go and check things out. So here's a cool sort of wonder what that was at some point because uh, I ran into like right before you got into Stoutsburg it was like it wasn't the same size as like the major like 
Manda Iron Furnace or Swatera Iron Furnace. It's a much larger sort of stack, but it had two of those openings, and you sort of wonder if that was some kind of small operation furnace, maybe for that plantation even, because it seems like that's what it was, because just the amount of buildings in that small area, and they all seem to sort of be coordinated together, because the one was obviously used to be a mill, and then there was the building, which was probably the mill master's house, uh, or their mansion, and then uh, barn and a couple other significant uh, buildings there, and then the uh, church, the Christ uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church there, Stoutsburg. So I have to do a little more research just to find out exactly what that is, and then I can give you guys more information in that regard. Because I honestly, this is just one of those things where you just sort of go out and explore and find stuff and go to new places that you've never been before and I never was there before and I had been through Stoutsburg maybe one or two times I had done a merchandiser run which is like a advertisement paper in this local area and uh, another cool cool stone house There's a lot of really old needle houses out there oh wow welcome to Richland borough I didn't think we were that close to it but yeah, this would be Richland then, and then uh, I want to actually. I know exactly where I am. I should have known we were this close because it's not that far off. Sometimes your brain doesn't uh, sort of figure out what's going on. Uh, we'll actually drive through Richland and we'll drive over to Newman's Town and. Uh, on this country road to take me home, we'll drive over uh, to the Fort Zellers then. It's actually, you're getting close to then, uh, we had done the Albright Chapel, is uh, Kleinfeldersville, which is sort of not terribly far from uh, Newman's town. But uh, I had spent quite a bit of time coming through here in Richland. I had some friends that lived here uh, that are from here. Places that was actually known pretty well for having cigar factories. I think there was one out. If I would have went straight there, I think the building actually still exists as well. But uh, all these little towns, they all like Myerstown, where I had uh, grown up, or I had lived for about I think 15 years. They actually had right on my street. They had quite a few uh, cigar factories. That was something that was pretty big in this area that they'd have these long, uh, like two-story high buildings that they'd have uh, these cigar factories in. What the quality was, who knows, but uh, they had quite a bit of them all over the place around here. Uh, it's unique. Sure, it was not up to snuff to the Cuban cigars, but still pretty neat. I haven't been out here for for a while actually. I just have a quick check battery life. I do have it plugged in. This is just being naughty today. Actually I haven't had any issues with uh, knock on uh, the van that I haven't had any real issues with this thing filming wise I got to get that camera working now because at the end of the day I don't have to worry about battery and how much memory it has and that type of stuff so and I'm hoping that the filming quality will be quite a bit better than this as good as this has been I would like to see what that thing can actually do but uh yeah. Sort of neat what you like, you go out, especially like you go out in the areas that you're not 
say familiar with or as familiar and see what unique things you can wind up finding that's sort of uh, pretty cool I think what we're gonna do too when we come up here uh, going up to Newman's town before there's a, you can take a right to go back to Fort Zellers I'm actually gonna make a left it's underneath like a really cool railroad bridge because there used to be an iron furnace I believe out there uh, iron furnace or a forge it was one of the two pretty small operation but there's a bunch of really neat houses out through there as well that elementary school back there is named after uh, Fort Zellers well, Fort, Fort Zellers uh, elementary This is right up here. We're gonna make a left. Some cool uh, buildings. Cause I think it was some kind of mill. That might have been like a mill at some point. And there's a old barn. We're right here on a creek. Oh, we're gonna go through here. We're gonna see what we can see. So we we're filming again. I think the thing like shut off on me again. I don't know what it did, but I was talking on and on and not paying attention to the camera. So we'll film on our way going back over to uh, where you can cross the road and go to Fort Zellers. Um, and just go through this again from a different angle. I stopped and took some pictures of some pretty cool barns. Uh, just a neat, really neat area. So, hopefully, I got that was one of them I took another picture of. And unfortunately, I think somewhere along here it stopped filming. Where exactly, I have no clue. Always love those buildings, they have like little outbuildings and stuff like that. Old barn, it's just so pretty out through here. I'd love to own a property like that. You know, the amount of history that these places have, too, is insane. A lot of these really neat far, little farm, little farmlets, if you want to call them that. All these little outbuildings, and this is a really pretty, pretty barn there, too. Beautiful moo cows. At least beautiful to their mummies, just like me. Other people would be like, oh my god, what is that thing? Sort of like in Princess Bride, is like, and they will say, my god, what is that thing? And that would sort of be the response at times to me. But as long as your mommy thinks you're handsome, that's all that matters, right? So, we'll continue on here till we get back over to the main road and then cross over and we'll go to Fort Zellers and see what we can see. Some of those buildings might have been the other direction. I honestly would be like going to the uh, right here, but I honestly don't know. But, it definitely had a mill going through here. Can you see some of the cement work and that type of stuff? And that takes you out to Stoutsburg, where we just were not that long ago, where we started this uh, road trip. And then we go back underneath the bridge here. Still some pretty colors on the trees, not much left, but some, but pretty neat bridge. And what we'll do is we'll take a left here, and then they'll go right over to that road there. And that will take us back to Fort Zellers. And it is aptly named Fort Zellers Road. That's cool. That is some kind of building there as well. Like there's just so much history out here. Um, how long some of these places have been here some of the first settlers in this area 
Uh, and obviously, we're coming up on a fort that these were actually uh, Cliff the uh, Wandering Woodsman, his uh, ancestors. Ah, she's sorry about that. I just saw another, like, it looks almost like a furnace over there. That one I don't have, I can't have access to, but that almost looks like. So one bad thing about doing these videos is like, ah, we almost died. But uh, that almost looked that that looked like that very much was a furnace back there. That's pretty pretty neat. I never noticed that before. Probably shouldn't have noticed it this time either. But you know, okay. Let me make sure I'm heading to the. I think it's this way. Kalbach, I remember that name. Yeah, that's it right there. I don't know if we'll be able to get right up against it, unfortunately, because it is private property, but I do want to stop here at the memorial, so... Thanks, everybody, and we'll probably start up again and go out to Newman's Town just to finish up the run and go through that town and then go from there. Thanks, everybody. Uh, we say goodbye to Fort Zellers. We're uh, backing up here, and I will try to get a little bit of a different angle going this direction. Unfortunately, it is, they have, it's not a posted sign, but it says under 24 hour surveillance, video surveillance, so I would assume they would prefer that you not go back there. But that that's the Fort Zellers. Pretty neat. Get that back. Maybe at some point I could wind up getting permission to go back there because I think it'd be cool to be able to I think they said on the inside they actually have it fixed up like it would have been back in the day. So pretty neat pretty neat place uh, but unfortunately it is if you do go respect the property because even though I didn't see posted signs I'm pretty sure that's the general idea is that that's what they would prefer so sort of is what it is now I gotta just figure out stop here as well and then we'll go to Newman's town eventually I just want to go do the historical marker thanks everybody all right so we're starting up again we're gonna actually skip Newman's town we're gonna go out this way towards Kleinfeldersville in that region uh, Milbach show you a couple cool houses along the way and then maybe finish up by going through Schaefer's town and then uh, That'll be the end of this Country Roads Take Me Home. Been an interesting day. Seen a lot of places. Uh, I really honestly did not remember uh, how big Fort Zellers was, but it's actually a pretty decent sized building. You could easily hold probably 20 or 30 people. I mean, it'd be tight. You'd be packed in there like sardines, but you could pack them in there. Uh, it's pretty, pretty neat, neat fort, and it's the oldest existing one. I didn't realize, I was thinking Lebanon County, but uh, they said it's the oldest existing fort in Pennsylvania. So maybe it is older than Light's Fort. I have no idea. I mean, Cliff had always said Light's Fort was actually built slightly earlier. I guess this one, like the original fort was 1723. So maybe considered from 1745 when this was rebuilt. Uh, that that's why it would be considered not as old as Light's Fort because Light's Fort was, I think, was built in like the 1720s, like the later 1720s. I'll have to brush myself up on that just to make sure one way or the other, but I do believe that's how it is. All right, for, uh, I'm going to turn up here a little further because I meant to turn there. Because this would actually, I think this here would actually take us down to Newman's Town if I remember correctly. This is the town of Milbach. It actually has a pretty cool uh, church here I had photoed in the past. But uh, how old this is, I'm not really sure. And we won't stop here today as much as I'd like to. It's pretty, another really pretty, pretty church. It has more of these cedars and that type of thing. But uh, yeah, 
there's a really neat uh, I think it's called the Miller house it's right up here that has got quite a bit of age and actually had they took I don't know if it was the kitchen or uh, so this would be a reformed church st. Paul's UCC um, but yeah that's that's got quite a bit of age this here on the left which I will even put put the window down it's got a cool little log outbuilding there this was originally uh, some Millbach homestead and there's a bunch of old cool buildings there as well but this is the Miller house uh, this is actually quite a unique structure uh, they actually took like I think it was the kitchen or something of that nature that they took out of this house and took it down to Philadelphia for a display in the one museum there to uh, show like German architecture and those types of things because they actually have a uh, there's another really neat house too uh, <coughs> they had uh, taken the uh, a lock or something like that from uh, Beenoggle Lutheran Church and uh, used that as well in that museum display I believe it's still there but pretty pretty neat place I think that that uh, Miller how the Miller house is actually on uh, the National Registry of Historic Places as well uh, and there's somewhere along here as well I have to find when I do the Jacob Albright and John Walter video there's the I believe it's George Becker farmstead and uh, another really neat neat house there as well but they had uh, that's where they held the first uh, annual meeting of the Evangelical Association. Now that would have been after uh, Jacob Albright had passed away. I believe he passed away in 1808. Uh, it's either 1808 or 1809. Uh, but John Walter would have been involved with that most likely. And then George Becker, who was the brother-in-law of uh, John Walter. And that's the home where uh, Jacob Albright actually passed away. So I wouldn't be shocked if it's this place here because uh, that I believe in the placement and the research that I've done that that probably is the George Becker home homestead and that's I believe that would be where Jacob Albright passed away. I think I think that's it if I remember correctly how they they talked about it but regardless it's a really really old place could have even been that over there because I know they said it was a farm and it was back off the road a little bit so that might have been more likely but uh, one of those two is probably it where they had the first meeting of the Evangelical Association and those of my friends that uh, belong to the Evangelical Congregational Church that's where your church started <coughs> they had their first uh, meeting of the church and you know, different pastors and all that so pretty pretty neat neat amount of history out here like i said i want to do a video on them jacob albright and uh, john walter uh because of their significance and the starting of, of the church and religion in general here in the united states uh john philip bohm would be another one that i'd want to do a video on him and everything he was involved with and then uh you'd have john casper stover henry augustus muhlenberg uh, Count Zinzendorf would be another one. Uh, these were very influential individuals, some of them involved in government. And regardless, they left an amazing lasting impact on our country and uh, how religion is observed and uh, how people worship today. I mean, these were men that had pretty unique views. Uh, Jacob Albright and uh, John Walter were people that felt that the church was not caring or loving enough and was not involved in the parishioner's life like it should be and uh that actually over there that is albright memorial chapel there on the hill that's where jacob albright is buried so those two houses might not actually be it because it might have been down that direction but they you know once again these are places that are really really unique 
regardless of whether that's the places or not, um, they hold quite a bit of significance. And we are now in Kleinfeldersville. It's a shame they used to have, uh, right next to this is the post office, and then right over there is the Kleinfelders. I think that right there is the hotel and tavern or right there now. It used to be a really, really old building uh, from I believe the 1700s and uh, unfortunately isn't in existence anymore because it burnt down. That's the old school for Kleinfelbersville. Pretty neat building. And we'll be coming up here on Schaeferstown shortly. And uh, once we get through Schaeferstown, that's where we'll finish. And, uh, believe then we're probably going to head on our way home. Maybe stop and get something to eat for lunch. But we're getting that time and I'm starting to get a little hungry. Here I'm up at the window up so we don't have the air flowing through here so loud. But, uh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of good memories coming out through here. My friends Andy and Karen used to live there right in Kleinfeldersville with their girls, uh, Rachel and Molly. Molly sadly passed away a couple years ago from sepsis. I had mentioned her a couple times in previous, previous videos. Uh, she was a sweetheart. She was quite the writer as well really had very thoughtful uh, the way she was able to express herself through her poetry and things of that nature some of the letters that they found later after she had passed away she was very insightful and uh, you know it's one of those things you wonder why but uh, there's a reason we're just not necessarily meant for us to understand Always, always have admired and loved Andy and Karen. And admire and love them even more after all that happened because how they handled it with such grace and courage is something I always admire. I talked about that in my Thanksgiving video. They're really, really tremendous people. The very best that God has to offer. So we are now coming up into... Uh, Schaeferstown, and this is historic Schaeferstown. A lot of really cool places. Cool little log cabin there. Uh, this is where that St. Luke Lutheran Church was or is, and uh, that also is uh, where Henry Augustus Muhlenberg was pastor, and he was the first and fourth speaker of the United States House of Representatives. So, very influential guy. His dad, uh, Henry uh, uh, Muhlenberg, actually was a pastor as well in the Lutheran Church, and he played a major role as well. So, we'll just go through here. I think I'm going to try to pull off maybe because this guy's sort of crowding me a little bit, and I'd like to be able to go a little slower just to show you a couple of the places. That right there is the Rex House. That is one of the oldest houses here in Schaeferstown. You have the Franklin House, which that is a really, really cool restaurant. It used to be an inn. Really, really neat place. Uh, that building there was Patriotic uh, Sons of America, or Order, it's PSOA or something like that, but they were veterans and stuff like that, but it's now the Brendel Museum. Uh, they do have it open from time to time and they'll take you over to the Rex Hemmerling house to show you that because they have it set up like it used to be. I've taken some photos there. Uh, but it's a pretty cool museum. I'd like to go in there at some point and show you guys that place. Uh, and this was the old uh, Lebanon Valley National Bank. Pretty neat, neat structure there. And, and right there is the old, uh, it used to be in a square but it was where the fountain was. And we did a video as well down that way is the Schaeferstown Water Company. Uh, pretty neat, neat place as well. And there's some stuff there about uh, 
Baron Von Stiegel, who was a really interesting guy, he actually is the founder of Mannheim. Uh, actually died penniless, and this is the Wigley uh, Mansion. It's actually quite a famous place. Uh, they had it in all the ladies' magazines back in the Victorian era, like the house plan, like the floor plans. Pretty neat, neat place. Another older church here. I'd like to do a walk through here at some point and then talk about some of the homes in a little bit more uh, than I am now because I really don't know a ton about these different places, but each of them has pretty unique, unique history. Uh, my friend Joanna, Joanna, she uh, lives here in Schaeferstown now. Sometime I got to get together with her. This was sort of unplanned, and I don't like to tell people at the last instant, hey, you want to hang out, go out to eat or something like that. It's sort of unfair depending on what their plans are. This is a cool place if you ever hear, uh, it's called the Tweed Weasel. It has a lot of primitives and antiques and things like that, like folk art. Pretty, pretty neat, neat place. But, uh, cool town uh, a lot of history and uh, with that we're gonna head straight across we're not gonna go down 501 uh, we'll come straight straight across here and uh, head on home if you go to the left there it takes you out to Cornwall which at some point I want to take you guys to Cornwall and to the iron furnace there it was quite the substantial iron furnace I think they did have some forge works there maybe as well not much but something but Anyways, with that, I'm going to end this uh, Country Roads Take Me Home, and uh, we'll go from there, and we will see you all about town. Thanks, everybody.